Good morning, everyone there, and good afternoon for anyone here. Um, I'm uh, joining you from Boston as planned. Uh, I appreciate your accommodation of a remote session. Uh, and hopefully we'll use the connected nature of this um, to uh, good or at least suitable effect. Uh, so uh, today we're going to be uh, further expanding our understanding of some principles associated with compartmental modeling, system dynamics modeling with stocks and flows. And particularly going to uh, be applying that that uh, toolbox to continuing to apply it to communicable illness and, and contagion. Contagion is a topic which uh, has a prominence in the historic development of these methods. Uh, it was one of the areas where these sort of modeling tools were first applied in the sphere of health. Um, because of the nonlinearity we discussed last time and, and the, the complexity that emerges from them. The fact that when we're dealing with these systems that involve contagion, where the evolution of one person is affected by the health status, for example, or the behavior, um, the attitudes, the expressed comments of, of another, the knowledge, attitudes, beliefs of another. Um, we have behaviors that can uh, be quite uh, challenging to understand, and more importantly, yet yeah, to manage or, or uh, control uh, based on our intuition. And uh, we've been exploring this a little bit with the basics of compartmental modeling. Uh, last time we explored some of the math mathematics, um, the basic formulas involved in those. And today we're going to be expanding on that model. And I'd refer all of you to and request that you now open, download and open the model that we created last time. Um, for those who don't have it uh, handy, I'll uh, emphasize that it's located on the course site. Um, and uh, specifically, you can find it in the area of models built in class. I'm gonna share my screen so that you can uh, acquaint yourself uh, with it here. Um, so it's, uh, if we go to the, the homepage here, it's down in this model built in class and it's the final one, CMPT 394 SIRS V1. And as you can see from the name, this model is, uh, well, it may currently be an SIR model, susceptible, infected, recovered. It yearns to be, to become an SIRS model. And we're gonna be exploring the implications of that of a circulating population today, as well as introducing some additional idioms um, and exploring some a prominent feature of nonlinear modeling and these nonlinear coupling systems in terms of their behavior and possible behaviors. And we'll see before this session is out um, how these systems commonly exhibit not just one equilibrium, but multiple equilibria, multiple points where they're in balance. Some of those points of balance may be more desirable than others. For example, the disease-free equilibrium, a case where we have no infection going on, the system is in balance, no recovery, no infection, no loss of immunity, because it's disease-free, is one alternative health future, for example, one alternative state the model can be in. But there can be others where it's in balance too. An, an endemic state where the number of new infections equals uh, per per day, say, is equal to the number of new recoveries per day. Um, and the number of new recoveries per day is equal to the number of people who lose immunity per day, um, et cetera. Um, 
And we have these different equilibria and they can have markedly different levels of burden and um, markedly different levels of cost, um, health concerns associated with them, uh, suffering. And uh, models uh, can help us study such systems, can help demonstrate the very simple elemental components that are that that can explain these sort of different equilibria and help us reason about how we can better control them and how, for example, we could shift a system that's in balance, adverse balance, in a situation of high burden to a situation of low burden instead. Um, often that takes much more effort once it has come about it's a high burden situation than it would have to prevent it. And as time allows, we may see that as well. Now, uh, we will be pursuing this exercise in any logic, and uh, you are responsible for turning yours in. You're also responsible for pursuing them individually. Um, so I've created uh, in Canvas uh, a hand-in area uh, for you to use to uh, hand in what will be uh, exercise three um, for this. And um, you'll find that uh, again in the assignments area, uh, excuse me, and not any, not generic exercise, in class exercise three, here we go. And it, it's only fitting that it be the third. Okay. Um, so uh, this is uh, the plan for today. And uh, to facilitate that, I'd like to jump in here, okay? Um, I'm going to see if I can monitor the chat window here alongside without occluding my screen too much. So I trust um, most of you have now downloaded this model uh, from the course site as stated and have opened it in any logic. If you haven't, well, do so immediately. Um, there should be an expectation that we'll be commonly doing this. Um, now, I'd like you to save this model as version two, as we'll be substantively extending it. And you're going to help me, help guide me on the particulars of those extensions as, your, as befits your growing repertoire within stock and flow modeling. So you may recall that we have a simulation here um, that posits, oh, 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 so I must have, must have uh, eliminated that. Okay, now we're, now it's a happy camper. Um, so we're gonna run this and we're gonna, we have a simulation which posits a certain, uh, certain set of assumptions about a set of, particular quantities here characterized as parameters, contacts per day, transmission probability, and default recovery times. And uh, if we simulate that out, we can go and see the trajectory. And we've gone through this and some of the reasons for why we see these trajectories last time, um, but broadly we see uh, uh, positive feedback, a, a vicious cycle, a snowballing effect of the number of infectives as one infected becomes two, becomes four, becomes eight. Um, by infecting susceptibles, that process goes on. It, However, it drains the, the unburnt wood, it uses up more and more wood, um, so to speak, uh, within the um, uh, within the more fuel, more and more fuel. And as its fuel gets depleted, the efficiency with which infectives can infect, uh, infect susceptibles uh, goes down. They have to work harder as it were. They have to see more individuals to find that, to find those susceptibles to infect. And there comes a point where at the tip of this, this curve here, this infective curve, at the maximum, where two things apply. And you're going to tell me 
remind me of those two things. What what applies at this tip of uh, the outbreak uh, curve where the infectives is at its maximum and it's essentially flat if we were to, to look into it? Okay, okay. No, I just scrolls it out. Um, uh, is different from the one I'm using. Okay, okay. Well, that's uh, mighty helpful to understand. I will remedy that uh, forthwith. That's um, puzzling, but uh, I appreciate knowing about it. Uh, doesn't uh, include. Okay, yeah, I did make that. Um, uh, I did add those in at the beginning of class last time, but fair enough. Uh, I will go post that um, right away here. So. Uh, pardon me for uh, two minutes while I uh, get that up there, if that. So I'm going to post mine. Um, I won't quibble with the name, but I'm going to post it with uh, version two here. Uh, there you go. Okay. So it's posted. You can get the exact one that I'm running here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for alerting me to that. And it will be handy to, to have these uh, same version. Okay. Thanks so much for for, um, for catching this. Okay. So um, you can tell me though, uh, what's going on at that point where the number of infectives is, is at its maximum? Give me, describe for me um, two ways of, of, or two characteristics of that point where this is at its maximum, other than it being maximum. Yes, the inflow of infectives, it's this one here, equals the outflow, so that's recovery. So number of infections per day, remember these are per unit time rates, yep, um, equals the, the rate of recovery, and the number of people recovering per day. So that's one characterization. That's kind of a collective characterization that abstracts over the um, um, the details of a particular person's experiences. And Teague mentions derivative equals zero. That's also true. Um, the by definition, a derivative of this of the stock of infectives per unit time is its rate of change. How quickly it's rising or quickly it's falling in its value. If this value is a thousand, but it's going up by five people every time unit, um, then it has a derivative of five. If its value is going down by five people uh, per time unit, per day, say, it has a derivative of minus five. That's what derivatives mean, right? rate of change here per unit time. Second derivative is negative too. That's, that, that's true. That's true. Um, uh, the it's it's not just that uh, at this point the derivative is uh, first derivative of infective is zero. The second derivative, the rate of change, the first derivative is negative. So the first derivative is going down. It has been positive here. It's zero, and here it's negative. But I like what Tyler said. Tyler, I think, was anticipating my comments. Not, my, I might add, the first time he's done so. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and here, the effective reproductive number is one. What does that mean that the effective reproductive number is one? Can anyone unpack that into to a term that you could use to sort of explain it a little bit more to a child? Okay, maybe not a baby, but a 12-year-old you know, or something. One effective infects at most one. Well, actually, at that point, it's the effect one susceptible. And it's not per day. Mm, it's not per day. It's over the what? Over the course of their illness. That's exactly right over the course of the illness. That's what the effective reproductive number of X means. It means a given infective, well, in fact, over the course of their entire illness, before they recover, X people. So if they infect one person over the course of their illness, remember I gave the analogy of passing the baton. It's like 
they replace themselves with a designated single person, right? And so it neither the number of infectives neither rises nor falls. They've just replaced themselves. It's like a chain of infectives, one giving it off to the next, and and you don't have you don't have increase in the number of infectives or decrease. Mm. Um yeah, it's over the course of illness. Good Richard. That's exactly right. Okay. So that's what we have here. Um now, the number of recovered is going up. This will relate to something that that we'll come to in a minute. Um, why is the number of recovered just rising here? Why is it simply rising up? There's no outflow out of the uh, recovered stock. Precisely, there's no outflow. Was that uh, Nicholas's voice I heard? That's correct. Okay. Um, uh, good. What I lack in face recognition, I sometimes make up for in voice recognition. Um, so uh, recovery here is the sole flow incident um, uh, into recovery. So there's an inflow, but there's no outflow. Mm -hmm. So this is accumulating the number of recovered people per unit time. Okay, now I wanna draw on that principle just a little bit more for our first modification here, okay? Um, I'm gonna save this as version three just to prevent um, confusion here. I'm gonna start working on it. Um, so suppose I wanted to record here the cumulative number of infections that have occurred, the total number of infections that have occurred thus far. Some of them may have gone on to recover, some may still be infected. How could I do that? How could I record the number of infections that have occurred to this point? Can you well, recovered is kind of similar to what we want, right? But it only counts people who have already recovered. Um, it accumulates the number that have gone through recovery. Suppose we wanted to accumulate the number that have gone through infection. How would we do that? Think outside the box or outside the the chain. How do we do that? Okay, you could. That's one way of doing it. You could add the number of recovered and the number of infected people. And I don't dispute that. As it turns out, um, that would work now. It's not going to work where we're going. But um, it would be a, a fit for task, a fit for purpose task at the moment. But can you can you come up with an, another strategy that draws on the techniques that recovered is used to to accumulate the number of those who have gone through recovery? What can we do? Anyone have an idea? Think outside the this this sort of chain of stocks. What can we do? Okay, I, I like adding a new stock. Okay, so so I like where Patrick is going once again. So I'm gonna take recovered, I'm gonna copy it. And maybe I, sh I should take infectives and copy that because it's got a name kind of similar to what I'll have. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a new stock. I'm gonna call it cumulative infections. And right now, that's more or less interchangeable with cumulus, cumulative number of people have gotten infected, but it won't be soon enough. So I'm engaged in some malice of forethought, designing my strategy here to 
to kind of handle handle the case. So so we have a new stock. Good start. Um, and then what do we do? It, it, so Patrick wrote, um, from susceptible to accumulative infective stocks. So, so this is a basic good idea, but you got to think a little bit outside the box. So we've got to stop. Mm -mm. Now that stock is going to do nothing unless there's some action associated with it. It's captured by a what? What captures actions in this? A flow, indeed. You speak well. A flow. Um, uh, these also speaks well. So, so whence does that flow come, and whither does it go? Or, to use more modern English, where does where does that flow come from and go to? I'm outside of Canada right now, so I can depart from the Queen's English without without uh, worry, although with some discomfort. Uh, from infection flow to cumulative. Okay, so you're getting the basic idea, but uh, uh, you're getting some ideas. <laughs> okay, so so let's let's think this thing through. So you, you've got you've got some relevant ideas, but it's just not fully formed. The cake is not fully baked. So if if it went like this, what what's the problem with that? What's the problem with this? Uh, let's, I can put a formula in there, but, but what's what's the problem with this? Yeah, they need to go on to recover. So you can't, like, you don't want, you don't, believe me, you don't want to do that. Take it from an old man. Um, either you clone or use a statistic. Ah, oh, that yeah, you're, you're, I like. You're talking though. You're thinking about like discrete event simulation. Agent-based modeling, having repertoire is good, but this isn't how you do it. There's actually a much easier way. It involves thinking outside the box here. What could you do? Okay, delay between cumulative and recovery. Uh, no, you're, you're overcomplicating it. You're, you're making it you know, this. No, you, you don't have to copy people. Uh, um, okay, can we have a link? I, I, I thought I saw maybe a, an inkling, a link that adds the infection count. Okay, there's some good ideas. Do we need a dynamic? Have it come from, ah, have it come from the cloud thing. Brian's got the good idea. I've been waiting for much of the day for a, a, a nurse practitioner called Brian to, to come to my dad's room and he never showed up, but uh, Brian here is, has helped me um, uh, Help me develop confidence in it when Brian's. Okay, um, awesome. Uh, so here's a cloud, and someone <laughs> posted a, a cloud, a cloud there. Uh, okay, okay, I see a whole swack of clouds. That's that's great. It's getting a, to be a cloudy day there. Um, oh man, um, we're gonna have rainstorms soon. Okay, so it's coming from a cloud. That is correct. And what is this? Cloud? It's like a cloud, cloud over Usman now. Okay, that's that's great. Um, uh, so so what's I'm going to call this flow new infections. So I'm I'm going to build it from Brian. Now, what's the value of new infections at any time? What's the value of new infections? What does the value have to equal? Where could I find the count of infections per day in this model? Yeah, it's the same as infection. It's the same as infection, actually. You don't have to worry about recovery. No, no. no it's just this. Okay. So guess what the formula is for new infections? Anyone? What's the formula? What do I have to enter here? Speak on. Vigorous use. Susceptible times infective. No. Like... no, 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 it's easier than that. How about speak on not so vigorous use? <laughs> I welcome them too. Um no, no, it's 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 easier. It's just infection. It's just the, the, the value of this flow. 
You just use it there. It's not copying anyone. No, we're just we're accumulating this at a rate given by this. So there's no there's no copying. There's no dividing. I'm not becoming a doppelganger of my of myself. My wife would panic if I did. Um, there's like no no worries about that. Um, it's just yeah, the infection flow. Ali Ali has it. it's just the value of this is just equal to that, and we it came like. Do you remember this is an idiom for integrating this? New infections is the derivative of cumulative infections, and so cumulative infections is the integral of new infections. It's just adding this up over time. Okay, just adding it up over little little bits of time, taking the area under this curve. So if new infections is 10 people per day straight through, each day we're adding 10, but it's not quite that. It's more fine-grained than that. Each half day, we're adding five. Oh, it's more fine-grained than that. Each tenth of a day, we're adding one-tenth. You know, or sorry, we're adding one person, you know, because it's 10 per day, et cetera. Um, or, or maybe just easier to think about if we are adding 24 people per day each. Half day would be adding 12. Each hour would be adding one. Um, however fine you go, you're adding that in. That in. That, that's what this is. It's, it's accumulating this over time. It's adding it up, but in a continuous way. And if you watch that video, um, hopefully you read a little bit about you know some of this idea of sort of, no matter how fine-grained you are going, you have this sort of risk of transition or here you have some amount of of, uh, of uh, new infections coming in here. So let's run this model. Remember, as my colleague Jeff McDonald says, always keep your model half an hour from being run. Um, so I'm going to, to run it and cumulative infections rises and rises. And at first it, it may remind you of this because the integral of a exponential is an exponential. For those who are a little bit more interested in math, and then it rises and it and it stays very high. Um, so that's good. It's just accumulating this number over time. When this number goes down to zero, it'll be it, it'll be at rest. But otherwise, it's accumulating. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable with that? This notion of a stock by itself with a flow into it, integrates that flow up over time? Are, okay, okay. So that's a common, common idiom here. Common enough that it appears sometimes on the final exam, even 3394. Um, okay, uh, so we have a little idiom there. Um, and having completed that chunk of work, it's good to create a new version of the model. Now we're going to do something together that explores the dynamics associated with stock flow and the nonlinear dynamics, some of the implications of that. And I want you to follow along for insight and for that matter, for marks. Okay, so first of all, we're going to rename this simulation. Oh, uh, sorry. What do we set the flow to? We set it equal to infection. Thank you for asking, Rachel. I love it when students ask questions. I also love it when other students answer those questions. Um, uh, uh, so please, others, feel free to, to let others know. But this flow is equal exactly to the value of this flow. When this flow is honored, people per day this is 100 infections per day yeah yeah okay so um any other questions about about where we're at with that okay so um okay so we're going to go to simulation and we're going to rename it to baseline okay there we go. Uh, this is our baseline. This is our reference scenario. This is a scenario against which uh, results of other scenarios will be compared. 
compare against a common baseline. So just like you need a meter stick or here in the US, it's a yardstick um, for weird, weird reasons. Um, uh, we we have a, a standard of measure against which we can quantify things, compare things, for example. Um, so it is with our baseline. Now, I'm going to lead you through a, a few possibilities here. So I want to use it to, to help you exercise your thinking about this system. Okay. Um, maybe to do this most fruitfully, I'm going to, though, take a moment for something less essential, but still really valuable for the human element. I'm going to come up and I'm going to copy this time plot and I'm going to paste it in a copy of it. And I'm going to call this um, cumulative, cumulative quantities uh, time plot. Okay, it's going to hold cumulative values. Mm -hmm. And specifically, I'm going to have it right now only have one thing. So I'm going to only keep one of these. So I'm going to get rid of the other two. There we go. Boom, gone. And then I'm going to put in cumulative infections. Yep, yep, yep. And I'm going to put in cumulative infections. And remember that autocomplete is not only my friend, but yours as well. Okay, build early, build often. This is a happy camper as indicated by this message down there. And I hope yours is a happy camper as well. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we have our baseline and we, we're we gonna have this graph uh, of our cumulative infections. Great. So now you're gonna help me riddle through some questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a system where we posit a spread of infection with with some some parameters, recovery time, transmission probability, contacts per day. And you're going to help me think through what the implications would be of altering those parameters when we compare it, the results against the base those of the baseline. Okay, so we're going to take this baseline and we're going to copy it. And we're going to paste it. Why do I do that? Well, sometimes I set some other settings in there. I don't want to have to go back and fuss some like stop time of the model. And and that happens to be, um, uh, oh, you know what? I probably should have. Funny, funny I mentioned that. Um, let me let me delete this one I created. And yeah, I, I, I should have done that before, but better late than ever. And I've often observed better Nate than the lever as well. So we're going to stop at the specified time, and the specified time will be a uh, hundred um, stop time a uh, hundred, and it's time unit. You may recall here these days. Okay, um, so that's good. Um, and just to make sure we're copacetic, that we're in a good shape. Um, we're going to run this and we're going to uh, to marvel at the results. There we go. And here we have cumulative infections and here we have the results of the outbreak as judged by the three state variables, susceptible infective recovery. Point of joy. Okay, so now I'd like you to go to baseline and I'd like you to go to copy it and paste it. How did I do that? I right click, copy, went up here, uh, on clicked on the model and chose paste. Here's baseline. I'm gonna change this instead. I'm gonna um, ask you what's the effect if we uh, uh, have, so uh, contacts, um, contact rate. So. Suppose we engage in some reduction of contact rate. What sort of what sort of real world actions, commitments might we take 
to reduce our rate of contact. Um, I'm not saying it has to be, they'd always secure 50%, but what sort of things might help us reduce our rate of contact? Okay, masking, uh, it could be argued, we'll come back to that. Social distancing, having a lockdown, working from home. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, good, staying at home. How about um, people isolating or, or quarantining if they think they might be exposed, right? These are all things that might lower the contact rate between susceptibles and infectives, for example. We're going to have it. And, and often, you know, to, to develop our thinking, to sharpen our thinking about models, we make use of some simple assumptions to start. We might get into more, uh, more detailed ones later. I, I welcome all the comments, and I, I, I'm noting... Um, uh, the many voices who are speaking up, and I'm appreciative of those voices. So I've changed the contact rate to half. And for those who 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 like to understand um, this particular package more, you notice it highlights a departure from the default values as specified by each of these. Um, so I changed from 20 to 10. 20 was its default value, and I changed it to 10. And now it it highlights that it is changed. Um, any logic is not letting me copy the baseline model. Okay, um, uh, that's uh, interesting. Um, you might wanna, okay, there's two options. Rachel, I would suggest just because we didn't change much from the baseline, if you do new, if you go up to the model itself and you do new experiment and just name a new experiment, just be sure that you go down in the model time area and uh, and then uh, set it to stop at specified time 100, precisely what uh, Shu Hao is uh, suggesting, Chi Shu Hao, okay? Yeah. Um, okay, um, keep on having the error. Uh, no, it's, it's not, um, uh, it's not, not normal to have an error in the bottom of the screen. Um, Maybe, Patrick, you could converse with one of our stalwart TAs. I see that at least Wade is here. Um, uh, and uh, if you could um, interact with one of the TAs about this, you might be able to quickly squelch the matter, um, perhaps even send him a screenshot of your problems window. When, when your model uh, encounters problems in the build, it will often summon summon up a um, ah Jenna is here the the the, the we have this incredible uh, set of modeling resources uh, arrayed before the students and so you can interface with them um uh so so if you were to view the problems we know sometimes it's shown sometimes even after the 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 fixed an error this little red marker that says I'm confused. Yeah, yeah, this is a, a known defect. It's a known shortcoming, no limitation of any logic in it is unfortunate, but persistent from version to version. And I regret it that, that you too are subject to its indignities. Okay, so we have the contact rate. So what's the effect? Okay, so I, I have this contact rate. I, I divide it by two from 20 to 10, what's going to be the impact on the dynamics? What do you think will happen? We saw the baseline dynamics. It was, it was, you know, uh, one that we explicated together in class during our previous session. And, uh, and excuse me, the, my, my computer is exhibiting, um, um, lower memory here and it is, uh, becoming slow. So I'm going to need to take evasive action and, and um, uh, address this, uh, this computational dysregulation. So pardon me for just, um, just a moment while I deal with this, uh, um, with it, while I deal with this matter. Okay. So uh, yeah, so the force of infection will be half of what it is. That's that's that is correct. Looks uh, like uh, um,
Okay, I'm, uh, I, I apologize uh, for my computational dysfunction there. Um, as I say, I think Zoom and, and Linux may have a memory leak or, or some such uh, nonsense, and um, it, it sometimes uh, engages in this dysregulatory behavior. Uh, so apologies. Um, okay, so uh, yes, I am. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jenna. Uh, much appreciated. Um, so uh, I did pose a question, though, and hopefully uh, you have, in my uh, absence, uh, enjoyed the, the pleasure of my absence in pondering that question. So uh, does anyone want to uh, offer some interpretation? What would the impact be? Yes, it would lower the force of infection, and that's a good insight. But how else would it affect things in terms of the dynamics, the behavior of the model over time? How else would it affect things um, to lower the contact rate? Okay, so I see Rushil, um, um puts forward a narrative here. Uh, having the contact rate means force of infection is lowered, number of susceptibles decreases at a slower rate. Okay, I like this. Since um, prevalence of infection equals infection divided by population size, and infection goes to zero, not all susceptible will become infected. Well, okay. Um, let me ask this. I mean, in the baseline, in the reference scenario, did all the susceptibles become infected? Yeah, it did for the yeah. baseline. Okay, let's 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 go run that. Um, I I I see descent and a, a healthy descent, and I'd like to to challenge us. So here we go for the baseline. So we're going to run the baseline, right? And we can examine this, right? Or we're, we're going to examine, we're going to run this out all the way to its end. Does the number of, in, uh, of susceptibles go to infective uh, go to zero? Actually, it it doesn't. It goes to a value that's low compared to its initial value for sure, but it ain't zero. It's non zero. Um. Uh, now, you may recall that this turned around, this infection turned around and started going down. But the spread of infection became no longer sustainable when it was said earlier, right? Two things, either of two things, well, two equivalent things were true. The rate of inflow infections here um, equals the rate of outflow recoveries here. Mm -hmm. um, or the effective reproductive number equals one. Um, it goes down from there, um, the number of infectives and so on. Uh, but the number of susceptibles is not, it's not totally consumed. And, and um, uh, we could, we could uh, get some insight um, into this by running this scenario. So I would say that, well, it's a good idea to say that it doesn't, it won't drain all susceptibles. That's true. And I like that insight. Neither is it true of the reference scenario, the baseline, but it will consume even fewer susceptibles. There'll be more unburnt wood left over. Um, uh, so what else uh, was going on? I think Rachel had a comment earlier. Um, the peak of infections is later from running the model. Not everyone, everyone got sick. Yes, that's right. Um, uh, okay. Um, we have fewer infectives over time. Yes, yeah, so all these things are true. So let's let's go run the baseline so it's fresh in our memory. Um, after all, it we're separated by the. Um, we did more of the experimentation before the. And I was afflicted by computational distress. Uh, so the number of cumulative infections here goes kind of close to the original value. Um, uh, it goes up to about 299,000. Um, uh, but it's about 753, funny you mention, um, short of, uh, of that 300,000. That that are in the 300,001 that are in the total population. 
Okay. Um, uh, so, so that's the baseline. We have 753 people who didn't get infected, who dodged that infection. Let's go see this halved infection rate. There we go. And now we see the number of susceptibles who remain is notably non-zero, right? And it goes to uh, about 17,850 remaining, right? So we, we really have a lot more unburnt wood. So I like that. Um, I like that. And, and what's happening, of course, is that the infectives, well, you tell me, I mean, a given infective, do you think as a result of this change, if they're engaged in less contact, are they going to infect more people over the course of their illness or fewer? Hmm? Fewer, 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 indeed. Yes. Fewer people over, over time or less, given these are continuous values. Um, sure. Uh, so that's 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 true. The cumulative number of people that have been infected is also smaller over the entire course of, of, of the infection is far smaller. We didn't particularly look at that, but um, we could have. It's about 282,000, not surprisingly, by the final time. And it, 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 it's virtually equal to this. It's just off by, by the number here. Okay, so that's good. Um, okay, um, now suppose we were to find people faster treat people faster. Suppose we're dealing with infection like sexually transmitted infections, bacterial infections, uh, where we can we can actually treat them more effectively with antibiotics, for example. Um, those that are not drug resistant. Um, oh, question. Uh, but the rate doesn't mean the cumulative would change. Um, sure, the cumulative will will, will of change. Um, it's 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 a good. Uh, I mean, so th the cumulative number. So what we changed is the contacts per day. It's going to change the number of infections going on over time. And what's going to happen is there's going to be per infective a lot fewer people they infect before they recover, and that will lead to less infections overall taking place. And we saw that the number of people that weren't infected went up from about 753 to 18,700 or something, um, right? Uh, it's over 18,000. So the cumulative number of people and the number of cumulative infections that have occurred is, is actually considerably smaller. Something like 800, you know, 18,000 people smaller for this case of having the contact rate. It was just... Um, um, it's the infection isn't able to spread as as effectively. Um, it has less opportunity to spread. Yeah, um, less opportunity to spread the infection. Okay, suppose we could find people faster and treat them. Suppose we could treat them in half the recovery time. How do you think? How do you think that would matter? How do you think that would impact things? We could find them more quickly, uh, say a factor of two more quickly. So instead of having a default recovery time of three, we'd have a default recovery time of 1.5 days, three days instead of be 1.5 days. How do you think that would affect, would affect things? I'm gonna go copy this and then I'm gonna paste it in and model as a whole. And I'm going to make this um, halved, um, uh, have uh, uh, recovery time. Okay, so the effective reproductive number and the basic for that matter, it's reduced since there's less time they start infected. Um, so they'd affect fewer people. So do you think the effects will be, oops, sorry, what am I doing? Keep in contacts per day, don't, don't change contacts per day. Change recovery time. 1.5 days. Okay. How do you think it will compare to the previous one? Will it be exactly equal, in effect? 
What do you think? Do you think the results would be better, Mars? Kind of hard to think through, isn't it? Okay, so they each day they're infected. If you lower contacts per day, they're going to have contact with fewer people. But here we're keeping them infected for less long, but they have more people they're seeing per day. It's, it's kind of hard to think through, right? Um, and uh, what you could see here is that have recovery time leads to something broadly pretty similar to that having the contact rate. 17844 left over, whereas having the contact rate, number of susceptibles that are left over at the, the end of the run was 17850, right? Yeah. 17844 left over. Is that better? Is it better to have 17,844 remaining susceptibles or 7,850 remaining susceptibles? Do you want more remaining susceptibles or fewer? More, yeah. That's why I'm carrying this hand mask here. And funny we mentioned that. Um, yeah, but it's it's a negligible thing. It's a negligible thing. I, I agree completely. Essentially, there's more error in how the mob, like, it would be false precision to say, oh, yeah, there's some grand difference there. I mean, the model is much more of a stylized characterization. The the issues associated with the model's level of, of quality of representation of the situation way more than dominate that small difference. So it's, it would be false precision to say it's you know, really that much better. You know. um, it's, it's, it's tiny, super tiny, which is interesting. And maybe it reflects the fact that, amongst other things, for example, the basic reproductive number. Anyone remember for this model, the basic reproductive number is the multiplication of three quantities. What are those three quantities that are multiplied in the basic reproductive number? Context per day. Transmission. Sorry. Context per day. Context per day. Transmission probability and the time for recovery. Time for recovery. That's right. So if you have contacts per day, what does it do by itself? Just just change that. What does it do to the basic reproductive number? It halves it, right? Yes. Halves it. If if you only change, if you only have recovery time, what does that do to the basic reproductive number? It halves it. Yeah. So in both cases, they operate by having the basic reproductive number. But the the mechanisms by which they affect things are are a little bit uh, different here. Um, that, you know, one stretches out the time someone spends in infective. One leads to more infections here, but they give pretty comparable results, and you can kind of see in the in the basic reproductive number, and indeed in the effective reproductive number. You know, they're both serving to to have it. Um, well, the basic reproductive number is serving to have. Okay, and and how about transmission probability? Suppose, suppose we wanted to have transmission probability. What sort of things might help us if we're having contacts with people or in their proximity to them or, or we're out and about and not social distancing? What sort of things might help us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, so masks. Um, transmission probability can. Yes, that's right. Yes, um, the N95 mask. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> that's right. So uh, I know it's not Halloween, but I like masks. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, so masks, um, masks are one thing that could lower uh, greater ventilation, right? Uh, faster ventilation is another thing. Um, that might help vaccination of one person could help lower the chance they they uh, transmit it given given the contact. Well, leaving the country is more something that affects through contacts, right? Um, uh, it affects through through their contacts. Um, uh, that it media it's mediated by contact. I'm talking here about things that are mediated through the pathway of transmission probability. 
okay so we could we could go and we could copy the baseline and we can look at transmission probability having that but i want you to reason about this model um so i'm going to say halved halved um uh, uh transmission probability so it's a probability per discordant contact between the disc a, a contact between a susceptible and infected uh that infection will actually be transmitted so if i reduce this to 0 0.05 i would argue that given the design of this model it, its effect is going to be the same as having contacts per day how do i know that precisely and why do we know that why Hamid? Force of infection. What about force of infection? The formula. Yeah. Having contacts per day will be the same as having transmission probability in this. But the other thing that you have to say is transmission probability contacts per day only affect the model here through force of infection. If there were other places they affect the model, you know, like someone's likelihood of recovery speed of recovery for example it turns out wearing masks you folks probably may not be aware of it but it turns out wearing a mask means even if you get infected you're typically less seriously infected because you're actually inhaling less of an inoculating bolus you're you're inhaling less bad stuff and so you actually can overcome the infection more easily typically if you're wearing a mask it actually reduces its ability to as to the the virulence of the infection its ability to to really um infect you as badly reduces how badly it, it infects you um it's it's understood from studying uh, masks so um so it turns out if we had other effects of those it might not be the same but here they're all mediated through this that's all they're all going that's exactly right Rachel yeah if you if you want to avoid being seriously infected you want to avoid being infected and the, and the uh yes yes i'm a proud member of the mask gang that's right um i just happen to get in a private room right now and that's why i'm not um uh this is it's not so much that it's a linear value it's just like the, in this particular model they're mediated through that you know if they were if they were affecting things in other ways their effect could be different but as you can see, you know, if you run this, um, oh, a low enough viral dose does not mean you get infected. Um, uh, that is, so it depends on your immune system um, strength. Uh, generally, our immune system can handle a small enough dose by marshalling uh, what are called cytotoxic T lymphocytes and, and B cells are involved. And, and basically your body can, can handle a smaller infecting dose and overcome it quite well um but even if you're going to get infected it turns out the size of the dose um uh turns out to have have some effect it can be much bigger whammy to the body if if it's a large dose uh, by the way i i had thought this was unlikely to be the case um based on some other work but it turns out uh, uh it turns out to be an empirical uh, fact that it, it actually really does matter and you lower the severity of infection plus you're likely to being infected by having a mask um you also lower the chance you'll infect someone else like a person with a much weaker immune system yeah who maybe can't tolerate even a, a, a small dose you'll affect them with less um anyway but if if we look at these effects we'll see it's exactly the same as as um, uh, what we uh, what we saw earlier um so the transmission probability and the, and the contact rate uh, are going to work through through similar mechanisms um okay um okay so uh these are some alternative scenarios but now now ladies and gentlemen um we're going to combine them after all, these models can allow us to examine the impacts of multiple interventions. So we're gonna, uh, cop I'll copy one of these or 
and I'll paste it in here. And I'll say, um, have contacts, um, uh, contacts, transmission, prob, and recovery time. So I'm going to have each of them. Mm. What do you think the effects of that will be? Do we sum up the the uh, gains we have from each of these and we'll get a combined gain that's just the sum of it? Okay, one eighth, a similar shape, but much lower. I'm hearing lots of thoughts. Great, great to get you thinking about it. I welcome those thoughts. But the effects are much more profound. And you could see them writ large here. Or the very absence of certain patterns makes you wonder what 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 happened here. So you could you can't really see anything here. I mean, where where where's where are the infectives? Where where are the recovered? Where are the susceptibles? Can anyone see the susceptibles? Yeah, okay, now, so here's cumulative infections. What's what's going on? Ah, what's going on? Cumulative infections. How many people got sick? Rachel said it earlier. Only four people got sick. Let's go. Cumulative infections, four people, right? Four stinking people. Well, they might have known. But four Four people total. What happened to the number of infectives if, if we if we watch it? This is what happened. It started at what? What did this start at? At what value did this start? One. And what happened after that? How big was the outbreak? How big did the outbreak get? Well, okay, that's a bit overly dramatized, Usman, but I, what you, uh, what you lack in in, in um, uh, fidelity to the, to the situation you make up for in poet poetry, um, yeah. So the infection was stopped before it got going. The number of people who are infected actually dropped over time. Four people did get infected. It's not. It's not that it didn't spread at all. It spread, but only to four. There were, but essentially, the number of people infected went down monotonically. It dropped. For the baseline, did it rise? Did it, did it, for the baseline, did it drop or did it rise initially? It rose. And how? It doubled, right? One, one, well, yeah, it, it rose in, and then it dropped, but um, um, it rose and, and doubled and doubled and doubled and, and and successively rose higher and higher and higher. Right? I mean, that's what this is is about. I mean, it it just built on itself and built on itself initially. Right? Um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we reached a tipping point. We reached a tipping point where, um, by having each of these, each of these values in turn, um, all three of them, we get an effect totally different, qualitatively different from what we see with each of them. Some of here is, you know, the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, it's, or different than some of the parts. So you have each of these. You can get an effect profoundly different, qualitatively different, totally different than what we see by having each of them. It's not just the sum of the benefits for each. No, 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 no. It changes qualitatively. Really, the number of people affected just goes down from the get-go rather than taking off. It's stable. It brings itself back into stability rather than being able to take off. Now, does anyone remember? 
for this, what's the basic reproductive number? What's the basic reproductive number here? And you remember how to calculate it? Mm. Mm. Okay, well, okay, but for the baseline, it, it, so that's true, Mark, and it's very insightful, but, but yeah, so it's multiplied, so give me the value numerically. Yeah, precisely, six, six. What is it here? Yeah, it's less than one is the operative thing. That's right. Yes, 0. 0.75. It's less than one. So what does that mean? What's the basic reproductive number telling us? What does a basic number, basic reproductive number of six tell us? What does that tell us? What does it mean? Speak on. What does it mean to have a basic reproductive number of six? I'm guessing. I like, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah. Yeah. First effective infects six people before they recover. Well, yeah, it's it's actually for the basic reproductive number, it's the first person in the population. It's surrounded by what? Surrounded by a sea of what? Susceptibles, darn right. Yes. They infect six people. That's what the basic reproductive number is telling us. How many people don't infect? They're surrounded entirely by, by susceptibles. Meanwhile, how many people will they in, 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 and by the way, those each of those six people they infect will then infect a bunch of their own. Maybe not quite six, because now there, there's some people around them that have already gotten infected, but it'll be pretty close to six in a big population. And then those will each will be quest six, or something close to six, but it will be going down. They'll each be infecting fewer, able to infect fewer and fewer until at that key tipping point of which Mark spoke, they infect. What's the key tipping point where they infect how many people before they start, before they recover? The key tipping point is what? When they infect one, one person, because they can barely replace themselves, barely find someone who can. Assume they could give infection, bequest infection before they recover. But with this latest scenario, what's our basic reproductive number? Yes, it's less than one. That's the operative thing. They don't even replace themselves by the time they recover. So, of course, it can't really take off. Of course, there's no big gangbuster spread of infection where one becomes you know two becomes four becomes eight or or you know one becomes six becomes 36 etc no 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 no. it's it's cut off at the chase i mean it's stopped it's qualitatively different it's stable and that ladies and gentlemen that is what health systems try for so that even if there's an infected person who comes into Saskatoon with TB or comes in with, you know, uh, measles or whatever, that will have a robust enough system that it will die out immediately. It won't spread. Okay, maybe they'll infect four people or something, you know, but but it will it will peter out. It will piddle out. It will it will die out quickly. Or as Usman said, it will be murdered before it gets started. I prefer less violent analogy, but um, I, some yeah. that may stick in some people's minds. Okay. Um, so yes, so initially, if R naught is less than zero, the inflow will be less than the outflow. That's right. That's exactly right. Precisely right, Sophia. So I love how she's thinking. She's viewing it from these two different lenses. One, there's the basic reproductive numbers of greater than one, greater than zero, or, you know, greater than one or less than one, right? That's the key tipping point there. When the effective reproduction is greater than one or less than one. If it's less than one, it'll be dying down. If it's greater, it's going up. That's great. 
But then think about it in terms of inflows, outflows. Well, what's going on with inflows, outflows? If the basic reproduction number is less than one, it means the outflow will be greater than the inflow. The number of infectives will drain down because more people are recovering per unit time than are coming in, right? That are getting infected. So it's going to drain down. That's why we start dropping off exponentially like that. So uh, R0 is always decreasing with models. It turns out, I welcome that question, but R0 is only defined at the current, at, at, the, at the initial time of a model. It's only defined in this initial state where everyone is susceptible except the single index infected. So you can't really say it's always decreasing for all models because it, it, now the effective reproductive number can be decreasing, but not always. And for that, we'll use our last five minutes with your leave. Okay, so let's let's address Mark's question and let's pursue let's pursue this with uh, with speed and swiftness and strength. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so uh, is it only increasing because we don't have more recovered? Ah, yeah, becoming susceptible. Um, uh, Darn Wright and Jonathan um, enjoys uh, reason to recommend him. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a loss of immunity. And I want you to tell me, how would we characterize loss of immunity here? Anyone? What do we need? to characterize a loss of immunity. Speak on is, yeah, flow from recovered to susceptible, darn right, okay? Um, and we're going to add such a flow, okay? Um, and uh, we will go to our flow, and, and I think I'll save this as well. I already saved it version four earlier, and I'm, I'm gonna be adding this, okay? So it goes from recovery all the way to susceptible, and there we go. And, um, okay, okay, there we go. Okay, great. And this is going to be called, um, waning uh, uh, of immunity, okay? We talk about how immunity wanes. The dynamics of immunity are fascinating dynamics. We have an internal individual healthcare, health system that also protects us. Public, it's not the public health system, it's a kind of individual health system. And it has very rich dynamics associated with it. We build up immune memory in response to infection, and then it dies down, and then we get vaccinated, and it boosts it, um, and and then it dies down, and we get exposed, and it can boost it some, and et cetera. And, and it's more complicated than I'm letting on, but it's, uh, it's very, very rich, and studying it gives some insights. We particularly want it to work in concert with and in tandem with not at cross purposes with the with the public health system. Um, okay, so we're going to quickly put in a parameter that's called uh, mean duration of immunity. Mm -hmm. um, incidentally, for COVID, there's a lot of discussion what this is, and it's quite a bit of uh, discussion of you know is it less than a year or greater than a year, et cetera. Um, we're going to make this uh, a year. Okay, um, 365 days, right? 365. Um, okay, I'll say 2425. Yeah, that's right. It, that, that's false precision. Um, sometimes I like that one. Okay, um, so it's it's one year worth, and uh, and here we go. Uh, and you're going to tell me. Uh, so this waning of immunity depends on mean duration of immunity and on recovered. And you're going to tell me the formula. Mean duration of immunity is a time, recovered is a stock. So what's the formula of waning immunity have to be? If recovered divided by waning immunity. Recovered what? Recovered divided by mean duration of immunity. Exactly. Exactly. Mean duration. Um of immunity. 
There you go. Okay. How do you think this will change the dynamics? If we have if the ability for people to lose immunity, how do you think it will change the dynamics? Okay, maybe get sine waves. Okay, I was hearing fascinating things. Rather than recovering plateau, it will oscillate. Okay, so so here we go. Let's let's run it. We're running the baseline, right? Okay, we get something where it it dies down here for a bit, right? Okay. Um, but what's going up here? Can anyone say what's what's happening here? Anyone? What is what's happening? Yeah, um, susceptible is going up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, over time. Now, we chose, unfortunately, a little bit of a of a, a short time frame. Um, uh, I'm going to change the mean duration of immunity. I'm going to make its default value actually just to to the cut rate chase. I'm going to make it sixty days instead. Okay, we're going to just. Um, to, to illustrate a point, and um, uh, I'm going to change it to 60 days. This would be more like, um, might be argued for some sexually transmitted infections, bacterial infections, et cetera. Um, okay, so here you have it uh, move up. And what's different from before here? What do you see different from before? Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, well, yeah, so what's different in how susceptible behaves here? Anyone? Okay, well, a small oscillation, but what what else do you see? What what used to occur with susceptible? Did susceptible ever go up before? Well, it says transition from recovered to susceptible. Is bad. I'm, I'm saying compared to previous though without any loss of immunity without any loss of, of waning of immunity yeah it looks like an under damp system yeah that, that, that's quite right um susceptibles drops it used to just drop right why did it only drop before when we had no waning of immunity why did it only drop or only drop or stay the same why because it only had a what Outflow, right? Uh, no inflow. Yeah, yeah. It, it only it, no inflows. Exactly. Uh, only outflow. Um, I think that's what Sophia meant. And and then you'll notice um, here it goes down, and then it starts recovering. Why? Why do you think it's going up here? Why is it rising at some point? Why must it be rising? For susceptible to rise, the stock susceptible. What must be greater than one? If the stock is going up. What is the general rule for stocks? The inflow of waning immunity is greater than now, the outflow exactly. of infection. And that means the number of people who are waning immunity is greater than the number of infections. So it will rise up. But why won't it rise up forever? Mm. Who More people are the number coming in fact. Exactly, Rachel. Exactly. Now, why doesn't it rise up forever? What starts to happen after a time? As the number of susceptibles rise up, there's a regulatory feedback. Okay, yeah, well, what feedback is this? Why Why is this number of susceptibles rising up like this? Yeah, um, so or sorry, why is it proper? Uh -huh. The outflow for infection increases more than the inflow of immunity, waning of immunity. Good, okay. So when this is flat, when the number of susceptibles is flat, what is equal to what? The number of susceptible is flat. What equals what? And yeah, so so infection equals wane. Exactly. Um, the inflow equals the outflow, right? When this is flat, right? Um, and then it starts to decline. And why is it declining? Well, number of infectives is getting larger, right? And that drains down the number of susceptibles, right? The number of infectants gets larger. It's draining it down. So inflow, or sorry, outflow is going to be greater than equal. So the number of susceptibles goes down, right? Um, number of infectives is rising. But the number of infectives doesn't rise up forever. Why not? Why does the number of infectives not rise forever? 
because infectives need what? In order to spread infection, infectives need what? Susceptibles. And the number of susceptibles is getting drained here. And so it gets drained down to a point and then even below the point where what equals what? Well, or each infective infects how many people? Infectives will rise as long as each infective infects more than what number of people? Infectives will rise as long as each infective infects more than one person, right? But at some point, the number of susceptibles, it's so hard to find susceptibles, you're not able to do that. And so the number of infectives, the number of people each infective infects goes, goes down to one. And the number of infectives keeps on dropping some because they're still infecting them faster than they're waning into the susceptible state. So the infect so the number of susceptibles goes down yet further and infectives drop because they're not able to even replace themselves. And it goes to an equilibrium where guess what is the case? What is the case at this endemic equilibrium where it stays in balance, where it's it, it the system is in balance, what equals what? If all stocks are in balance, you notice all of them are in balance. All of them are not changing here essentially. I mean, we could run it out a little bit more for them to be totally in balance. What must be the case for each of those stocks? Inflow equals outflow. Inflow equals outflow. Inflow equals outflow. Each and every stock in turn, its inflows must equal its outflows. And the number of people, guess what? If, if the number of infectives is, is staying constant, the number of people that each infective infects, the effective before they recover, the effective reproductive must, must be what? for the number of infectives to stay constant, one, one. It's at this endemic point that each person is handing it off to one other person. The system's in this balance where the number of susceptibles is such that each infective can't infect more than one. But if they infected fewer than one, then the, the number of infectives would go down, the number of susceptibles would build up until they can be more efficient again and, and they can infect at least one. So it's in this crafted balance. That's all we have time for today. You folks have to get to other classes, uh, probably some of you, and I appreciate your attention. Normally I have office hours, uh, but I've got my family duties uh, today and uh, I'll apologize for uh, not being able to offer them today. I will be trying to make uh, an office hour session happen uh, on Thursday or Friday if I can. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for bearing with it. Please hand in your models um, to the uh, to the uh, take-home exercise three. Uh, I think I set a deadline of uh, 4 p.m. if I'm not mistaken, but, but make sure because I set it Eastern time, make sure that it's 4 p.m. Saskatchewan, okay? Um, wish I could